Hey guys, welcome to Cafe IO. Cafe IO. Happy New Year and this year is going to be the year for AI agents. What I mean by that is that we will see a lot of more AI agents conversation brewing up, companies and organizations adopting AI agents or frameworks coming out to help you build AI agents. Now, as we think of AI agents, right, it is very imperative and important that we think of a problem statement called design pattern. And as I was trying to implement AI agents in my organization and try to build tools, this is a problem I stumbled upon. This problem is very, very important because it kind of helps you lay out the architecture patterns for building AI agents. And this is something that is not discussed around by far and large. Why is this important? Because software architecture has had an evolution. We have had microservices, layered architecture, event-driven, but the growing complexity of AI systems need a more structured approach than just traditional patterns. I'm not saying that traditional patterns are not working here. You're still probably going to use, be using most of them under the hoods. But the idea is how do we take them and apply in a more agentic state? So what this research paper does, which came out like about two months back and really it took, it took me a while to digest this, but think of it like we have architecture patterns, design patterns when we develop software. So these are AI agent design patterns, right? What do I mean by that? That will become very clear as we go forward. This is a pretty long paper. I, I, I would want to cover as much as I can within the scope of, you know, the video. And if you have not subscribed to my channel, I'm going to continue to talk about AI agents. So if you want to learn about it, learn about software frameworks, architecture, how do you deploy an agent, things like that, frameworks, please subscribe, please support my channel. That will mean the world. All right. So foundation model enabled generative AI is facilitating a lot of stuff. Fundamentally, agents are powered by LLM. You can think of them as the brain or the reasoning engine under the hood. However, what happens is most of the times we believe that these LLMs are all there is to it, right? But we fail to realize that we have our own organizational knowledge base, which is some form of rag. We have agentic patterns like how do agents work, whether they work as a coordinator, whether they work as a worker, all of that decisions. How do these agents in a multi-agentic environment interact with each other, right? You have, you know, two agents. So for example, this guy and this guy. These two are talking, right? So uh, again, just random props. So how do you think about them in a more structured way from a design pattern perspective is this is the intent for this paper all right there's there's some references that they have made uh, that we can go through obviously the title of the paper is present but let's look at a very very important diagram so the methodology is by the way very very good they have looked at a it's it's a very good paper because the methodology is strong they have done reporting they have looked at data and all of that but this is where i wanted to reach to so what you have is the ecosystem of foundation model based agent. This is not all the patterns, but if you see in from top to bottom this diagram, you have the user and you have a couple of broad categories here. You have agent as a coordinator, you have external systems which are non-agentic systems. It could be an AI system, it could be a non-AI system, it could be tools which are largely understood as API calls at this point in time, or it could be data processing systems. and you know, any of that, right? Or it could just be a data store as well, right? A data store could be something like a vector DB to support all of this uh, database, whatever, right? So the first category is agent as a coordinator, then external systems. And at the bottom, you have agent as a worker. These are like different worker agents are, you know, talking. Now, what they have done is they have put the different patterns within the gray boxes. So if you see what is happening, you know, a user is invoking some external system and getting a outcome from that external system or a user is getting a response from an agent or getting a response from a probably a worker so the user can get response from multiple places there's also a developer here who's responsible for deploying the agent as a coordinator i'll assume the same thing is also present to represent an agent right so this diagram kind of shows you different areas that you need to think about so we know this tools registry single path plan generator, self-reflection, multimodal guardians, cross-reflection, one-shot, all of these are different patterns. And what this paper has laid out is slowly give you the different sort of overview of what it is. For example, if you look at 
the most common one which is retrieval augmented generation based models why is this not selected this facilitates or enhances the knowledge you know updation process what is the word updatability of the agents while maintaining data privacy of the on-premise foundation model so this is a rag there can be a self-reflection where the agent is kind of generating feedback on the plan and reasoning as well so it's kind of providing a way to refine and do a little bit of self-reflection on it which is okay self-reflection is the pattern right you can have a cross reflection you can have human reflection you can have voting based cooperation so all of these different patterns are laid out in this paper for us to read upon and see again i'm not getting through all of these patterns but let's try to see some of them. So for each pattern, what they have done is they provide the summary context problem and what does it force, right? So when we say force, it really means that, you know, kind of lay the ideas that this pattern is enforcing. And it's not necessary that we end up with a single pattern, by the way, it could have multiple patterns. This is a passive goal generator where there's a memory, there's a passive goal creation basis, a dialogue and a lot of context engineering. Each pattern can have a drawback. Like there could be a lot of noise, you know, user may have a sorted background. So it's ambiguity can come in. So this is reasoning uncertainty. And there are some use cases that they have also listed out, like hugging GPT can generate responses to address user requests via chatbot. So if you have a chatbot kind of a use phase where it is very specific and you don't need to know the prior or the, you know, something like the next set of states or don't need to even retain the state for the next conversation, you can go for something like this. And then you have more complex scenarios like we'll, you know, let's go to RAG. Uh, yeah, this is the RAG one. This is what we are usually familiar with, right? So there's an agent, this plan generation, task execution, prompt, there's a retrieval happening. So this is a RAG based an agent. What else do we have? We have a lot of complexity. There's one shot querying, there's incremental model querying, like you go, you see the, so the plan generation kind of iterates over the foundation model and gets the result. And then you have, you know, some sort of a single path plan generator, but I'll rather go to a more multi-path so this is like a complex scenario and this i think is a very reasonable representation again this also should have had rag by the way in my view but again those become a combination of two patterns essentially so what are you doing here you have a user sending a prompt there's a coordinator agent which is doing the context engineering generating the goal and you know getting out a plan so basically a plan is getting generated the plan could have a multiple paths. It could be, you know, the, uh, one task is assigned to an agent, which is, let's say, making sure to call an API to get some sort of a data or a document. Then there's a tool to process that document. And then, you know, there's another tool to kind of join all of those responses and give back. There's a verification process. So this is a multi-path plan. And this could further be augmented by something like a RAG, single shot, reflection and all that. Now the point is, as you go down this path, what you'll realize is that left, right, up, you know, all directions, you'll have different design patterns coming in. So it's very, very important to represent your agents in something like this. You know, and then different patterns have different sort of methodologies in here. Like for example, this is a plan reflection. So you have an agent, this context in engineering, this plan generation, this memory, and then there's continuous learning around it. So there's an expert which is giving feedback and basis the plan like human being would tell you the plan like once the plan is generated plan is being published the human being or an expert can say yeah this looks good does not look good the agent can do the self-reflection and it can do cross-reflection if there's another like a reflective agent sitting around so obviously different patterns can be combined and this is a example of like a you know the multi-plan system but let's say there are multiple agents and you have to arrive at a consensus like some sort of a consensus building scenario it can lead to a lot of you know the intelligence is more collected by different agents each agent specializing in themselves it can lead to a higher quality of response but also has a lot of overhead because the whole process could be a little more how do i explain like each each of these agents are telling it so there's a lot of communication happening to a state which is like let's say it's a json file and everybody is voting then you have something that's going through the vote understanding that process so there's a little bit of overhead to that but hey if you need it that's good enough then different sort of scenarios can be you know role-based cooperation so there's a planner agent assigner worker creator different sort of agents in most scenarios of agentic design patterns while this document has gone into you know defining like 14 15 scenarios 
no not 1415 i think this this is much more scenarios some of these are more agent registry which is more like deployment things and stuff like that but let's say you enter into a scenario where there's different sort of design patterns in play you have reflection going on you have rag going on you have coordination going on for a certain category of problem you are doing voting so all of these design patterns combined together kind of give you an overall architecture of the system and that's what i wanted to arrive at right because once you see something this in this way you start to look at your agent designs in those constructs and these constructs will then help you to look at your agentic system in the next video what i'll try to do is bring forward the conversation of deployment because again nobody is talking about it right now everybody is you know using some sort of easy tool like you know auto gen crew ai where you are building the agent but how do you actually deploy an agent is something that we need to talk about from the very base like you know let's 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 take a completely on scratch approach try to put up a cloud infrastructure and things like that all right so that's what is in store for next video if you have liked this conversation thumbs up share and put in a comment thank you that was akash bye bye